Today we're going to make a leprechaun. I'm Susan and I've got a few here to show you. First of all, I've got a guy with um, a red beard, a little hat, black shoes. So here's leprechaun number two. It's um, kind of am animated and fun. So I'll be um, going through shaping him, putting on the details, what order to do them. And for this guy, you're going to need um, some kind of green, a green of your choice, a black stringer for the belt and the hat detail, a yellow stringer for the buckle detail, and then some kind of um, orange or red. And if you want to do a stringy type of beard, an encased color is good because it makes kind of the strands of the beard um, stand out. And there's some kind of pink for chai is another one, sim chai, or probably even ivory. And if you want him to look like he's had a few nips, then, you know, maybe you want something a little more rosy on there, a little, little rubino or something. Okay, so. So I'm just melting more green, winding the green onto the mandrel to get the basic shape of this uh, leprechaun from head to toe not worrying very much about the shape now. I'm gonna want them to be a little bit uh, chunky in the middle where his beer belly is, but just getting lots of that green wrapped on from the bottom all the way up to the top where his hat is, just covering up the top of that mandrel because this is going to be a plant stake. So I don't want a hole in the top of this leprechaun. Right now, I'm just smoothing out all of the green, melting it so I can marver it smooth on my torch marver and also i'm using my ozobin lentil shaper which gives that nice uh, rounded look in the middle filling in here and there where i might have a low spot so i have a nice smooth look for his body his legs his top and i did see you know there is um, a little spot on top and he will be he will be covered in glass all the way up to the tippy top so his hat We'll cover up that spot on the mantle on top when I add more glass up there. Shape looks pretty good. Now let's get to the belt. Now it's time to add the black belt. I kind of like to use a commercial stringer because it gives a more uniform look. Not really sure what this one is. I think it's a Fetra Black. And so I'm getting the body of my Leprechaun hot. I want to kind of think about this body in thirds. So the belt is going to be right at the bottom one third of his body. So I have the, um, the stringer in the flame and the body of the Leprechaun right below it and I'm just going to spin it around holding the stringer stationary and then melt it in and marver it smooth on my torch marver so that belt is kind of flush with the body of it. You can tap it down with a knife. If you have a little um, high point here like I do, you can use tweezers to pull that off so you don't have anything sticking out. The arms are going to kind of overlap the belt as is the beard just a little bit and then we have a buckle to put on there. So we really want this black to be smooth and uniform all the way around. The black stringer we're also going to use for a band around his hat and also for feet, little shoes at the bottom. Just continuing to melt that in. So the belt and the body become one. My Ozobin lentil shaper is good for this as well. That's looking pretty good. I think that'll do for a leprechaun belt. Yellow in the center for the buckle. So I've got my yellow stringer. I've got my spot. And I'm just gonna drop a dot in there. I'm not gonna worry about the shape. My dot of yellow. I'm going to take a knife or some other kind of tool. I'm going to smash it flat. If you want 
want, you can kind of square up the edges of the yellow. So again, remember, we are putting a beard over this. Then I'm gonna come back over that yellow buckle with a dot of black on the inside. My hand needs to be a little more steady for that. Okay, just so we have like a, a frame of the yellow, okay? So there's my belt buckle. I like to melt that black dot in pretty good and then you'll end up with just kind of like a frame. Um, we don't want his arms to be too thick. Um, so above the buckle, um, but not quite all the way up to the top. Maybe um, you might want to think about where his hat's going to be. So I'm just going to come probably maybe as wide as the belt is, that much higher above his um, buckle. And so I'm going to turn the buckle 90 degrees away from where I'm going to put the arm. And I'm going to get that nice and juicy and I'm just going to swipe down over the buckle and towards the front for his arm. Okay, so that's the first arm. I'm going to take my knife and make sure that's down pretty good. You can even poke in to give him a kind of a crease in the elbow. There's his first arm. Now I'm going to go on and do the same thing on the other side. He's got to have his arms to hold his mug of beer. And I guess if you wanted to do him with a mug of beer, you might want to make the arms come a little closer. But this one I made um, too long. So I think what I'm going to do is pull off a little on the too long arm and then maybe split the difference with the one that I think is too short. So I'll pull that one down a little bit more. And we are going to put hands on the edge of there, just a dot of like a pinkish color. Okay. Give him an elbow in here. There's my arms. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give him his nose. And what I've got here is um, kind of a mess on the end. It's, um, I think this one is chai. So that's kind of a pinkish color. And, you know, if you want them to have, whoops, a little shocky color, we're just going to put a dot. And the dot for the nose. It's going to be about the height of his shoulders, the top of the arms, and centered above the belt buckle. So that gives you a pretty good um, place to aim for. And if you want, you can use the same color as the leprechaun, the green, put a dot there first. But I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to put a, a dot of pink right about there for his nose. And I'm going to go ahead and put his little hands on. I'm going to put dots of pink down below where his um, arms ended. And I'm not really concerned about size. We're just trying to give a little hint of a hand. Okay. There. And who knows, we may even put something in the hand. Well, one, one looks a little more um, some malformed, but we've got a nose. We've got hands getting all his body parts all right and also that belt buckle you may have to tap down again now we're going to find our orange stringer that we pulled I'm just earlier going to cut and i really want a thin part of hair that. beard hair down from his nose i'll go down um, in the center and then i'll go to one side and then i'll go to the other side so it's probably hard to see I'm going to lower my flame a little bit so I can get in there really close. And remember, don't forget to keep the feet hot at the back of it. We're working in some detail in the front, so don't forget about it. You don't want him to crack. All right, now I'm just going to get the orange hot. I'm going to lay it down. Um, 
nose on down. And then I'm going to go to another side and I'm going to do it on the side. We want his beard to be pretty dramatic. It's kind of a fun part of the leprechaun. And I'm going to go to the other side. So just kind of alternating where the hair is so we're kind of spreading the heat out. And if it starts to get balled up, you can kind of re-pull that stringer. I like to make an emergency stringer. Okay. Just however much you think, how much hair you want, whether you want it to come down over the belt buckle or not. You want to be careful about his nose though. You really don't want to melt that nose in too much. And, um, you know, we're not going for nose hair, but you know, he could end up with nose hair. You know, who knows? getting real melty. I'm going to pull some on the fly here. Yeah, lowering the heat really helps so you have more control of that stringer. And if you wanted to, you could put in some more um, like a streak of red or two just to give some variety in his beard. But I think I'm just going to stick with this orange for simplicity's sake. There's not a wrong or right amount, but I try to cover up the green that's underneath. So when I think I've got all the green covered up between his nose and his belt buckle, then I feel like I've got enough uh, beard hair on there. And let's see how we're doing. There it is so far. back in there. Yep, he's got a, some of these are starting to kind of come up, so I'm going to just gently tap them down with a knife. And because we put clear encased over the orange, it's going to kind of cause the orange strands to stand apart to be more well-defined. Okay, one side looks a little higher than the other, so I'm going to fix that. He's fun to make. He's fun. All right. Okay, I think we've got a pretty good beard there. We can always come back at the end, touch it up a little bit if we want. All right. So now we're going to move on and we're going to work on his hat. So for the hat, what I'm going to do is make sure that I have um, the rim that comes down around his nose and beard because I'm not going to bother to put eyes on it. So I want the rim to be just above the top of his beard and his nose. This is kind of a thicker glass rod. It might be um, seven millimeter range, five to seven millimeters. So I could switch to a thinner green if I had one, but we'll just stick with this and see how it goes. All right, I'm going to start in the back, and then I'm going to just wrap it around slowly, and I have not turned my flame back up. I still have a low flame. This is going to be the rim of his hat. So you do want to kind of round it. All right, now I've met in the back. There's the rim of his hat. Make sure that's fastened on real good. And I'm going to turn my flame back up. Get everything good and hot, good and melty. And I want to shape the top of his hat a little more. Just to make sure it's not too kind of pointed or square. I do want it rounded, so I'm adding a little bit more to the top. Glass wants to round up, so that should be pretty easy for me to get a nice round top, like a derby looking hat. And I'm going to do the same thing on the hat with the buckle that I did on the belt. So I'm going to put a dot of yellow 
and then I'm gonna add a dot of black in the middle. Okay. So here he is so far. His hat shape is looking pretty good. Since I've been working on the top, I'm gonna to switch and go down to the bottom and I'm gonna add the shoes. I'm gonna take my commercial black stringer and I'm gonna put two little feet down on the bottom. And so the way that I'll do that is I'll get the bottom kind of hot and I'm gonna turn him upside down and just, I'm gonna place two dots basically on either side of the mandrel and then I'm gonna squish the dots in. And those will be his feet, just a hint of little shoes. If you wanna get fancy, you can put buckles on his shoes too. I'm not gonna do that. It's just two dots, not touching. You don't want them to touch. So there's my two dots for his shoes. And I'm just gonna take a knife or I'll take the torch marver and I'm just gonna press them up so they're flattened. And then heat them in once again. And now he's got two little feet, little black shoes. All right, now I'm gonna come back and focus my attention on his hat once again. And um, if we like, we can put a black band around the hat as we did with our sample guy. I guess if I should have done, if I was gonna do the black band around the hat, I should have probably done that before the rim, but we'll try it, we'll see, we'll, we'll give it a whirl. I'm gonna select a skinnier stringer for that. I've got a pretty skinny black stringer in here. And it is encased, so that will help it from spreading. And I'm gonna do the same thing like the belt. I'm gonna start in the back, and then I'm gonna wind it around to the front. I'm gonna go just on top of the rim of the hat. I'm just barely next to the edge of the flame torch. I don't want it to get too molten. I want to control my stringer. I've got it all the way around. Stop. So there's his black band. There might be some places you have to tap it down a little bit just to keep it looking straight. So I'm happy with that. Try to get it melted down flat a little bit. And again, you could stop here. You don't have to make buckle. I may just put a yellow dot, give a hint of a buckle. That might have melted this one too much on top. But yeah, I can still see the black there. It's okay if it all melts in. All right, so I'm gonna find my yellow stringer. I'm gonna put a yellow, find the top, right above his nose, right above his buckle. I'm gonna put a yellow dot. Got my yellow dot. Flatten it with the knife. Square it off if you wish. Again, come back in here with a black dot in the center of the yellow. Flatten down the black dot. So I've got a jolly little leprechaun with a pink nose, two arms, an orange beard, little black shoes, a beer belly and I think he's ready to go down to River Street for um, March 17th and paint the town green. So there is our leprechaun and he's ready to go in the kiln. And here he is out of the kiln ready to brighten someone's day.